Hi, this is Valerie Leonard, your instructor for New Venture Spring Semester 2019. As you know, we should have been meeting right about now, but we were not able to given the inclement weather. So we're going to focus on week two today, go over some things that we would have gone through in class, and then we will talk about the lab assignments, which you should bring to class on next Wednesday. So uh, before we go on, I just want to let you know, too, that the content of this presentation is from the Strategizer and Canonizer websites. And you should visit those websites to you know, prepare your work for Wednesday. So the agenda for tonight's class is first we're going to review the revised syllabus. Next, we're going to give an overview of the final business plan format. After that, we will have an overview of the business plan model canvas. And after that, we will do an overview of the value proposition canvas. And this is the same agenda that we would have had um, today. We have lab one, the business model canvas, and we said time permitting, and lab two, the value proposition canvas. Again, time permitting. So get as much done on these two models that you can, and then um, in class on Wednesday, we will have you go over them and critique one another's uh, canvases, time permitting on Wednesday. So when we look at the revised syllabus, and I don't have it in this presentation, but you should see it in Blackboard, You'll see that I added assignments that were more germane to the completion of your business plan. And this includes the preparation of drafts for business description, your marketing plan, operations plan, management team description, and the financial projections. So in essence, what we'll be doing is from time to time, you will be completing various sections of the business plan and I will review them and in class when we do the labs you will also have an opportunity to present in front of the class and get comments from your classmates and then when we have the final you will submit the final project which will include all of the sections that you have had feedback on before I think that will give you a richer experience it may not necessarily translate into less work but you will at least have had a first pass before you do your final assignment and you will have gotten some really good feedback from myself as well as the class i also took away the quizzes the monthly reports mentoring students and questions and a critique of a business plan so the business plan that you'll be critiquing will be those of your peers and you can review the syllabus in the syl syllabus and info forum on blackboard so at this time i want to talk about the overview of the business plan format so the business plan format is based on the format that's given in our text and our text is preparing effective business plans and entrepreneurial approach second edition by bruce Beringer. You should follow the business plan outlined in the text. I realize that from time to time, um, this may vary somewhat based on the type of business that you have and how long you've been in business. But for the most part, I'd like you to leave the, the format intact. You'll start off with your cover page and your cover page should include a really nice graphic, nice fonts, being neat and clean and really draw the reader in and make them want to open your presentation after that you should have the table of contents and obviously that describes what's in the plan and where people can find it and then you have your executive summary your executive summary should be one page no more than two that would give an overview of the entire plan such that one would not necessarily need to have the entire plan in order to understand what's in it and whether or not he or she wants to proceed further. After that, you would include the company description and that would include things like your mission, vision, and core values. And 
Since core values was not outlined in the book, I'm going to offer that for extra credit. I think it's very important that regardless of what you're doing, that you be guided by your core values. It's not mandatory that you include the core values, but if you do, you will get an extra 10 points. And after that, you should also include products and services and a description of those products and services and the current status of you know, where you are in the development of your plan and the legal status. You should also include the indus industry analysis, and that will include the size, growth rate, and sales projections for the industry as a whole. And if you need to drill down to a specific sector within which you are operating, then you might want to describe that as well. You should include industry characteristics and trends, benchmarks, including key ratios that would give um, the reader some sense for you know what would be considered success and then you might indicate where you think you would fall within these benchmarks and key ratios that your industry might use to gauge success you'll also include long-term prospects and how the industry analysis affects and is affected by other parts of the plan and what that means is, you know, generally, you know, whatever happens within the industry is really without, you know, it's outside of your control, but you will probably be impacted by, um, in, you know, downturns as well as upticks in the industry. And you want to be able to articulate how what's going on in the industry is going to impact what you'll do and how you'll respond. The next section is the market analysis and marketing plan and that will include market segmentation market target market selection buyer behavior competitive analysis that is how you stack up with the players that are already out there um, sales estimates and market share estimates the next section is the description of your management team and company structure and that should include uh, the resumes, or not really the resumes, but bios of your management team and the skills that they have that will give the reader comfort that they can, in fact, succeed in the business that you guys are in. You will describe your board of directors, your board of advisors, other professionals with whom you might consult, such as an attorney and other key experts, and you'll also describe your company structure and the legal structure and how the work flows within that structure. The next section is the operations plan and product design. And in that section, you'll describe the operations model and procedure. You'll also talk about the business location, the facilities and equipment and operations and your strategies and plans. And finally, you'll talk about the financial projections, obviously in the financial projections section, and this will include sources and uses of funds, your income statement, and this is pro forma, meaning before you start what you expect, it's going to be how much money you think you'll be making, um, your pro forma balance sheet, and your pro forma cash flow projections. Okay, and if you have any questions, please feel free to email me. My email address is Valerie F. Leonard at nonprofitutopia.com, or you will be more comfortable sending it to V. Leonard at Roosevelt.edu. So, as you might recall, there were two websites that I asked you to look at and I think will be really, really good resources for you. The first is Strategizer and the other is Canvanizer. So I ask that you go to the Strategizer website and get familiar with their resources. You should download the resource on the Business Model Canvas as well as the Value Proposition Canvas. And as you probably know by now, the Business Model Canvas is a strategic management and entrepreneurial tool. It allows you to describe, design, challenge, invent, and pivot your business model, 
ideally all on one page. You know, I know when you start off, you might not be able to get it all on one page, but you know, do as much as you know, as much as you can during the brainstorming process, and as you go along, you will tweak it and make it more succinct. And the same thing with the value proposition camp canvas. So the value proposition canvas makes explicit how you're creating value for your customers and it helps you to design products and services your customers want as opposed to ideas of what you think is best for them. So more about the business model canvas and this is from the Canvanizer website. The business model canvas reflects systematically on your business model so you can focus on your business model segment by segment. This also means you can start with a brain dump, filling out the segments the spring, that spring to your mind first, and then work on the empty segments to close the gaps. The following list with questions will help you brainstorm and compare several variations and ideas for your next business model innovation. And just so you know, you know, I copied this verbatim as well as some other areas. And there's some instances where the English may not necessarily flow properly. Um, the people who design Canvanizer are from Germany. And in some instances, you know, there may be areas where the English doesn't flow quite as smoothly, but I thought it best to quote them verbatim rather than leave anything to interpretation. So this is from the Canvanizer website. You know, the words are not necessarily this presentation as you probably can see. So one section is your key partners. Who are your key partners? Who are your key suppliers? What are the motivations for the partnership? Another section on the canvas is key activities. So there you're brainstorming around what key activities does your value proposition require and what activities are most important as it relates to your distribution channels, customer relationships, and revenue stream. So what business activities are you going to engage in in order to make, you know, make the implementation fly? When we look at value proposition, we want to think about what core value do you deliver to the customer? Which customer needs are you satisfying? And that's a section on the campus. Another section on the canvas is customer relationships. And you ask yourself and you'll respond to the question on the canvas, what <clears throat> relationship that the target customer expects you to establish? How can you integrate that into your business in terms of cost and format? There's another segment, customer segments. And in that case, you're going to be responding to two questions. Which classes are you creating values for? And in this case, we're, not, we're talking about classes of customers. So remember, we're talking about market segmentation. In those instances where you have a segmented market, you're looking at you know, various classes and what connotes value to that specific group. Okay, and the next question is, who is your most important customer? Where do you think you're going to drive or derive the greatest revenue stream from? Under key resources, you ask yourself and you answer, what key resources does your value proposition require? What resources are important in the distribution channels or the most important? what resources are most important as it relates to customer relationships and the revenue stream. So there are different resources that will help you to strengthen your customer relationships. There are different resources that will help you drive revenue as well as reach your customers through various distribution channels. 
So when we look at the distribution channels, you want to ask yourself and answer, through which channels do your customers prefer to be reached? Which channels work best? How much do they cost? How can they be integrated into your and your customer's routine? Next, we want to look at the cost structure. What are the highest costs in your business? And which key resources and activities are the most expensive? And what are the actual costs? That is a question that I added just for clarification. And finally, we look at the revenue streams. For what value are your customers willing to pay? And remember, just because you offer a wonderful service doesn't mean that your customers are willing to pay for it. So the importance of doing the activities or the exercises around value proposition are very, very critical so that you're not wasting your time being engaged in business activities that don't generate any income. So what and how do they recently pay? And how would you prefer, or how would they prefer to pay? You know, do they prefer PayPal? Do they prefer debit cards, credit cards, cash? You know, you have to really understand your customer, get a sense for how they prefer to pay, and make sure that you can receive payment in the way that they are, you know, more likely or most comfortable paying. And how much does every revenue stream contribute to the overall revenues? And then what are the actual streams? Again, that's my editorial. So this is what a business model canvas looks like. And I got this from Strategizer. You can fill this out. You can blow it up as a poster and do some brainstormings and put post-its on it. Or you can go to Canvanizer and you can actually type into a fillable form and, you know, that would be a little bit easier. But whichever you prefer, um, as long as you have this format where you're answering the questions, who your partners are, what your activities are, what your resources, your key resources are, your value propositions, your customer relationships, describe your channels, you describe your customer segment, your cost structure, and your revenue streams. So if you go on to the Strategizer website, remember you have to open an account in order to download these resources. You find a number of resources that will support the business model. The ones that are most important are this first resource, um, that's seven questions to assess your business model design. After that, you'll see business model canvas constraint cards. That's good to know. It's not essential for our class. It's, you know, it's a good resource to look at. Designing crystal clear business model canvases. That might be helpful. Testing your business model of reference guide that will be helpful as you develop your value proposition. And then to me, the most critical is the business model canvas instruction model. And then the business model design space card deck, you know, that's good to have, but is not essential. So I would prioritize the business model canvas instruction mo manual as well as the seven questions to assess your business model design. Those would be my top two priorities. I know you, you know, doing 50 million different things and you can't do, you know, every, everything that's on this website. The next tool is the value proposition canvas. And that helps you to really flesh out your value proposition and you know the value proposition in and of itself the way it's stated is usually one or two sentences but there's a whole lot that goes into how you get those um, one or two sentences right so you want to start off with your customers you want to look at what your customer might gain what's in it for them 
for buying your product or service. You might consider looking at their jobs to get a better sense for who they are and um, what they might use your product or service for. And then look at what gives them trouble. What causes their pain? So for every gain, you want to use your product and services as an answer. So what is it about your product? How is your product going to help them gain? How is your product going to help them relieve their pain? And then what is it about your product or service that helps them do a better job? When we look at the value proposition supporting tools, there are you know, quite a few of these. I would say one of the most important ones is the 10 characteristics of great value propositions. That's a checklist that you should probably review first. <clears throat> Excuse me, there is another resource, a day in the life worksheet. There is an ad lib value proposition template that's a pretty good one um, another one that's very good is the customer gained trigger questions in fact that's essential because that helps you to actually complete the little gains circle and if you notice the shaded area that is the area um, it, it corresponds to the area on the value proposition tool and then there's the customer jobs trigger questions and the customer pains trigger questions and the game creators trigger questions. So all of those are critical in developing your value proposition. So you want to prioritize the 10 characteristics of great value propositions checklist. You want to prioritize the ad lib value proposition template the customer gains trigger questions, the customer jobs trigger questions, the customer pains trigger questions, and the gain creator trigger questions. And then you want to also um, look at the identifying high value jobs that will help you sort through the, the job section on there on the value proposition tool. Another one you should prioritize is the pain relievers trigger questions. Um, the other tools I think are nice to have. You don't have to necessarily prioritize them in the top three or four, but they're nice to have. And that would include sell your colleagues on value proposition design. That would be you know helpful you know if you're having to sell a team. Um, another tool is six ways to innovate from customer profile. Another one is spark ideas with design constraints. And here's a really good case study that Tile Bao, and I might be mispronouncing that, so forgive me if I'm butchering that name, but that is a real life case study that could be very, very helpful. Then there's the customer profile, the value map, and most importantly, the Value Proposition Canvas Instruction Manual. So that is a need to have. So in closing, I invite you to try the following at home. We would have done this in class. We would have gotten a start in class, but we didn't meet today. So um, you want to start on your business model canvas get as far as you can and then start on your value proposition canvas. I ask that you have a draft of both of these in time for class next Wednesday and we will work on these some more in class and we will also present them to the class, get some feedback and go from there. So this brings us to the close of our lecture. I'm sorry I was not able to see you guys tonight, but if you have any questions regarding these assignments, email me at vleonard at roosevelt.edu or Valerie F. 
Leonard at nonprofitutopia.com. Now, as we prepare for Wednesday, make sure that you bring your business model canvas and value proposition canvas to class and be prepared to share progress and work in the lab. We'll have a short lecture at first and make sure you're keeping up with the readings Refer to your syllabus to know what you should be reading, refer to back Blackboard as well. And make sure that you bring your laptop computers to class. Until Wednesday, you take care. Okay, bye-bye.